Hello and welcome and in today's video I'm going to show you the best art creatures for the center since ASA is getting the center very soon so let's get straight into it. First up we have got the Basilo and the reason why this creature is here is there is so much of an expanse of underwater stuff on the center I just feel like it's necessary to have one of these creatures you can just take them around everywhere and explore the oceans yes a Moza and a Megalodon will be quite useful as well same for the Ichthyosaurus the Basilosaurus is just the most well-rounded one for doing anything really and it is immune to electric eels and jellyfish which is a huge benefit to the general player so I really do think that does play huge benefits when talking about a creature like this and what its use is going to be for on the center because it's probably mainly going to be exploration reasons why you're going to want to have one of these things on the center and obviously there are loads of resources which you get from under the water as well which is where you're going to use one of these creatures so in my opinion this is the ideal one for the center next up we have got the aloe and i'm going to kind of put the carno here as well because i do think that's better in my just general opinion for this list but i'm going with more of what the community thinks because i'm a bit freakishly weird with my aloe addiction and not aloe addiction carno addiction and with the aloe this creature deals the bleed ability it does come in packs as well so you get the pack buff too and they're pretty fast and they will do hefty damage to the boss is i should say on the center it's you fight in one arena but you've got the brood mother and the megapithecus to fight and this will do pretty well for both of them there is a better creature for the brood mother which is coming up later on the list much higher on the list as it really is so op against them but you know against the megapithecus it, it it's just going to be so easy to use one of these things and for the brood mother as well it's just you know there's another creature which has quite a huge advantage against the brood mother which makes it better for facing it and it's pretty decent at facing the megapithecus as well you're not really going to have any issues there the aloe is also just going to be pretty great as a general carnivore around the map as well not all of these creatures have to be boss related on the list although that does help you complete the map and that is quite useful these creatures are just great for any general harvesting task of meat and hide they're also just just great combat creatures for any combat that you need to get done and obviously if you want even more power behind that you can always bring them out in packs and you're going to have an even better time next up we have got the spino and this is definitely a very great underwater creature to have on the center but it also does play a role as an absolute beast against the megapithecus and also just a general great carnivore for all of those things that i talked about the aloe for but personally i just think the spino is a better option and a better creature for the center because you can explore a lot more of the terrain with it and also on top of that it just generally does more damage and is more powerful than the aloe and the mobility is definitely there as well still with this creature because it can turn 360 on the spot can stand up on its hind legs and it does a dehydration buff as well for even more damage like since that tlc came out this thing is so buff the only thing it doesn't really have is the bleed ability and obviously the pack buff but still they really do pack a punch in terms of damage and the exploration really makes these creatures like almost seemingly endless in a way like it's there's so many uses the endless amount of uses i probably should have said for the spino on the center they just they really work well with the map and just most maps like the center that you'll find on arc so that's why i've put them on the list in at number seven we have got the ut and this creature is here for boss reasons like it's just going to make those boss fights so much easier and also just as a general carnivore the ut is really nice but it is mainly here for that boss ability of where you know you can buff your creatures it really does give you a huge edge i was going to put the dead on on this as well but i didn't really feel like it, it was necessary in a way especially for the center you don't really need the dead on that much obviously it will help and you'll be able to heal up your creatures more with that but with the ut it really just plays such a huge role in having a successful boss fight like you just really want one of these creatures obviously i'm not going to chuck it way up high on the list because you're not actually using this to kill the bosses and it definitely is possible without one it's just it really gives you just such a huge advantage it makes sense pretty much in a way like necessary to 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 do it in, in a sort of way sort of sense i know it isn't but you know i find it's necessary these days like the success of having a ut to not having a ut like 
it's, it's quite a big difference. Next up, we have got the Thyla, and this creature really does move with just such great speed. And I guess you can put the Deinonychus here as well, except I've kind of refrained from putting that creature on the list because it won't be in ASA, so I'm just trying to keep all the creatures on this list. Like ASA creatures, and obviously the fly definitely is. You can see it's there's literally ASA B roll for it right now. This is it on the island in the Redwood Spime, if you couldn't tell already, considering that's pretty much the only map. I know Svartal Thyme is there, but that is a mod which you download on that. The island's the only uh, official map you could say that's on ASA, and obviously using the Thyla is just going to be such a great thing for the center. They can scale any up and up any wall or vertical surface these things move with such speed which really does make them great traveling mounts they have some pretty decent weight they deal the bleed ability and also just a lot of damage on top of that as well they're just so mobile they deal so much damage they can just get around everywhere they're just great and i think everyone personally should really get a thyla if you're playing on the center and most maps with thylas to be honest in general and also they do act as just like in a way, they're even more tempting to tame, considering how easy they are to tame. That's what I was trying to say earlier, and I just forgot my train of thought. Either way, they're, just, they're really easy to tame, very simple knockout tame. They can be trapped really easily with like no issues whatsoever. You will have just no trouble with a creature like this uh, in terms of taming. Makes them even more enticing and even more of a reason to go out and tame one of these things for yourself. Definitely would highly recommend. In at number five, we have got the Therry, and no, this creature isn't just here because its saddle is unlocked at level 69. Nice. Although, you know, that gag and that joke is always extremely great to have in these videos, and that is definitely 100% the reason why it's on this list. This is actually just a really great harvester of all things fiber, berries, wood, thatch, meat, hide, chitin, keratin, all of those things. Obviously, it's not going to harvest any kind of rocks and all of that and actually maybe you could get something like the mantis to use for that although not really sure if it is on the center i'm pretty confident that it isn't and obviously scorched and ragnarok and other maps like that won't be on asa at the time the center's out obviously scorched will be out a month later then you can just use mantises then but either way you have the ankies and the dodix as well they're not on the list by the way but a nice mention for them considering we are talking about gatherers this thing really great gatherer again you could also use it for the bosses on the center which would be extremely helpful because you know you get a great gathering creature but you also get a great boss creature all in one a great package although the only real downside for these things is healing them uh, well it requires sweet vegetable cake and that is far more expensive than any kind of meat and it really isn't that hard to tame any of these other carnivores which have been mentioned on the list so you should probably do that instead although it definitely will work out if you use stereos for the bosses next up we got the rex and this is here just because it is a really great carnivore just for the center and obviously just for doing any of those bosses as well the megapithecus and the broodmother this will work very well in doing all of that and it will be really great and especially considering on asa just how easy these things are to tame with that baby taming method it's pretty much a no-brainer to have some rexes in your arsenal when doing the center and that is obviously just it's a good thing because, you know, you get a really powerful, nice carnivore. Things like Ease and the Carcodonsaurus really aren't too necessary for the center, especially for the PvE side of things. This is a more PvE biased list, by the way, because I'm really not a PvP player. Don't know too much about that space. Have done a little bit of PvP in my time. Not the best at it, and obviously SOTF as well is a PvP thing. I've done quite a bit of that, but general official pvp i've not really done much of that whatsoever so you know obviously this is a pve by li biased list sorry and obviously the rex doesn't have the greatest amount of ability but for a combat creature you really don't need that all too much and it does pack a punch it's got incredible amounts of health compared to some of the other carnivores which we mentioned on the list and it deals very decent damage and it is a very solid boss creature you really can't go wrong if you tame something like the rex especially considering just how easy these things are actually to tame on the island in asa and obviously the tame method will be the same on the center in number three we have got the baryonyx and this creature just has to be here for being such a great caving creature you're going to need to do those caves 
to be able to even defeat the bosses in the first place. So that is why the barrier is here. And again, probably like one of the best, most mobile small carnivals you can get in the game. And they're just so nice and so easy to use. It is really a no-brainer to have a creature like the Barry in your arsenal for doing the center. Like just get one, get a Baryonyx, use it to do caving, use it just as a general carnivore. You can even use it to explore the ocean as well as they're really good swimmers. You will definitely not not be unhappy with your tame. You're going to be very satisfied with your tame. And, you know, that's how I feel about the Barry, at least. And, you know, I feel like you will too. They can also jump, you know. You pretend it's like a Mario game, you know. And they also have to spin. So I guess now it's Mario Galaxy. They can stun creatures up to the size of a Megalodon. Again, that's going to make it really helpful for just general underwater travel. So it really is a no-brainer, in my opinion, to get yourself a Baryonyx for the center. At number two, we have got the Megatherium. And this is just the go-to creature for defeating the Broodmother. I have to put it on this list, as the Broodmother is one of the bosses on this map. You've got the Broodmother and the Megapithecus. And this is just going to do loads of great things against that creature because of its very harsh bug against insects and you're seeing the broodmother spawns its little insect minions you know you're going to deal tons and tons of damage to it it really is just such a huge advantage you really can't go wrong for any broodmother boss fight if you have mega theorems you can just take them out so quickly like that and they can also just gather berries as well in the general worlds on top of that as well they're just pretty decent travel mounts and just general herbivores for all of the hub or things like berry gathering which i've just mentioned and you know maybe not the worst in terms of mobility as well which you know maybe you would expect and maybe you wouldn't expect but you know truly great creatures is going to do absolute wonders for defeating that brood mother boss so that is definitely why i would recommend you tame one that's the main reason why it's here but it is also just a general great creature for loads of other things as well which you'd use a herbivore for so again i've said it a lot but it is an absolute no-brainer for the center and you really really should tame a megatherium and in number one we have got the argentavis and this creature again for every single map just like pretty much that obviously supports a flyer it is like just the go-to the rg is so good at gathering all things metal and all of that its saddle acts as a portable smithy it also does have a pretty neat regen buff when killing something and then eating that dead body and obviously they've got tons of weight reduction on all things metal crystal and obsidian that's why they're so great at it obviously they don't gather metal but you can always just get yourself an anki which they can pick up because they can pick up a very wide range of creatures or you can use a dodic and then from that you can just pick up an insane range of creatures especially with the anki and the dodic because obviously they're going to be very useful for harvesting all of that metal resource which is going to play a huge benefit and the rg is just so versatile and all oh, of its features that it really does have to be on the list it can even carry an extra small creature in its mouth as well if you know that's that's what you want and also if you're wondering after the center has been released and you're wondering why the sorcerosaurus is not on the list well the sorcerosaurus obviously isn't out yet and i don't really have any judged opinions on it yet but actually comment down below do you even think the sorcerosaurus is going to be uh, on on the list it probably will be to be honest considering how much of a hit the running ganatha was on the island do you think the shasaurus is going to be good and do you think it's going to be the creature for you do you think it deserves the number one spot you know comment that down below on all your thoughts i'm going to share with you the top 10 arc speed tames so without further ado let's get straight into it in at number 10 we have got the shadow main and the reason why this creature is here on the list is because it is just so fast at traveling on ground. It's kind of insane. And you could say, oh yeah, there's loads of creatures like the Thyla, which would be great for doing this as well. Well, personally, from my experience, the Shadow Main just does it better. And you'll see it here in just a second. Because in this B-roll, for some reason, I did the wrong thing first. And then I actually end up doing the right thing. But either way, this thing can just jump along crazy distances. And it can swim really fast as well, which definitely does benefit to its speed. It is such a quick creature. Obviously, it's only main downside being how slow it is to tame. Going against its quick nature, of course. But either way, very, very quick tame. Very useful for bosses and all things like that. 
and it does have natural armor as well and as you can see there you can see it's swimming in the water and it is definitely pretty quick in that environment too next up we have got the Deinonychus, and these creatures are super speedy and although they don't have the jumping abilities of the Deinonychus, i generally think they just tend to be a little bit faster on ground i know they can't go under the water as well so you might disagree with me there but just generally for ground travel I find these things to be a lot faster and they can jump around and do all of those things as well. Obviously they can't jump to the height of a shadow main but you don't really need that. They also can deal a ton of bleed damage to any kind of creature. Doesn't really credit to their speed but it does credit to the speed that they kill things but that is not obviously what this list is about but if you didn't realize already Dionarchus is a very quick mount, much faster than something like the Raptor. It has the pack buff as well, capable of doing all kinds of parkour and scaling any kind of vertical surface, wall, anything like that. Shadow Man can't do that actually, but the Shadow Man can go invisible and this thing can't. So, you know, there's always trading blows on either side. And, yep, this creature is in at number 9 spot. Next up, we have got the Pteranodon. And you definitely can't discredit this thing for its speed, especially as a flyer and there are some much faster flyers out there it still definitely is not one of the slow ones like the rg and the quets and all that and although i can very much deal and cope with the rg speed it's one of my favorite creatures actually in the game you know this thing does travel at quite a significant amount faster at that default speed and you do have that spin attack as well not just great for pvp raids but also great for generating a lot of speed and also if you want to drain stamina fast for some reason it's really good doing that but yes as you can probably tell it doesn't really it's not a gliding flyer which obviously would make it just a better quicker flyer but still just for general flying around it really does get the job done it flies relatively quickly and it's tamed from such an early level a pteranodon really is one of those creatures where I think everyone should be taming one, probably because of that speed. Next up, we've got the Crystal Wyvern, but also just the normal Wyvern as well. They're pretty much interchangeable. Just think the Crystal Wyverns look nicer for the purpose of the video, so that's why I put them here on the list instead of the normal Wyverns, but it's the same applies to the normal Wyvern as well. They are really fast creatures going across the map. They're actually like one of the fastest just flyers flying normally, which definitely does make them pretty quick and it's noticeably faster than something like a pteranodon it's why the wyvern trenches are so hard to get into and out of on scorched earth because wyverns are just so fast like once you have one you realize the only downside really to that speed is the horrible turning circle which you get on these things it's like worse than a lorry on a road it's like really why is the turning circle so bad but you know at least their speed is pretty decent. Next up, we have got the Griffin, and this creature really just not does need to be here. And I'm kind of going to put the Desmodus here as well, another gliding creature. And they are just so quick in the air. Obviously, this is with some buff movement speed. None of the other B-roll is with buff movement speed, but this Griffin B-roll is because, um, you know, I just had some extra movement speed on at the time. They don't quite travel at this speed you can definitely see the game struggling there but the game does kind of seem to struggle with griffins anyway just at normal speeds it really does show they go really fast and it's because of that gliding ability that they travel with such speed if they if their the gliding ability didn't exist for this creature then the wyvern would be a faster option but because of that gliding ability the griffin is able to fly at much much faster speeds and also they're pretty heavy damage dealers as well, making them even better for a fast creature as they're fast and get around and they can deal tons of damage as well. Really amazing creature. Next up, we've got the Snow Owl and I just feel like this deserves to be in a league ahead, although maybe technically it might not be any faster than the Griffin or the Desmodus. I'm pretty sure it is and at least to me when riding around on it it feels faster and snappier to me than the griffin and the crystal not the crystal i mean the desmodus and obviously this is going to look slower but you know that griffin was heavily buffed in movement speed and i am kind of very gently taking it the whole thing just feels a lot smoother on something like the snow owl and it just feels like a 
more agile creature to ride around on. It also just feels a bit more maneuverable. Maybe I got it wrong on the speed front here, but still, personally, for me, I think it's faster. But if I really have made a mistake on that one, then comment that below. And um, my opinions will probably change after the making of this video. Obviously, they're not just used for speed. They have that kind of heat-seeking ability, which makes them pretty good for finding anything that you might want. Players or just small creatures or anything like that. And obviously, they can heal up creatures as well by freezing them. That's why I want no stamina on a creature like this. As you know, the more stamina you have, the longer you can hear the creature up for. Not just so you can fly over longer distances. Next up, we have got the Rock Drake. And this creature really does deserve to be here. The Rock Drake has an immensely fast speed. And it is a glider as well. Definitely faster than all the other creatures we have mentioned so far. And it is really quick, speedy and agile on the land too. Which makes this an even better creature for that speed. And although some people are probably going to expect the galley to be on this list. There is going to be no Gallimimus on this list coming up. And this thing completely demolishes the Gallimimus in general speed. Sorry galley fans or just general Syntac fans. Because they usually tend to be correlated because of Syntac and galleys. Yeah, you're not going to get the galley in this video, but I guess he got a quick honourable mention in the number four spot, which is the Rock Drake. Although I would definitely have not put it this high if it was in the list. Maybe chuck it in at number ten or something like that. But the Shadow Main is still a lot faster than something like the galley, and obviously it can travel over much longer distances because of that jumping ability, and it can obviously swim a lot faster too. Whereas with the Rock Drake, it can just dart from rock to rock and just glide incredible speeds and you know its walking pace isn't too bad either. In at the number three spot we have got the Managama and there is no lie that the Managama is one of the fastest creatures in the game that is Ark. These creatures can just travel with such speed it is sort of insane how fast they can actually go and I'm always very shocked every time I use one of these. And also, I do want to give a quick mention to the gas bags as well, as you can get some pretty reasonable speed with that creature as well, although I wouldn't put it in number three spots. For you gas bag speed lovers, that is another pretty fast arc speed tame as well, which you should probably look into if you're looking for some fast tames. You just saw two of them there, as that Managama just went by them. And this creature isn't just used for speed, it can also freeze loads of creatures as well, which obviously makes it extremely OP, has been nerfed since release, and the stamina drain isn't too bad either, which kind of matters for a fast creature. Obviously, it's not going to demote its fastness, but it can be even faster if it has more stamina because it can be fast over longer distances. Therefore, in the grand scheme of time, it just is generally a faster creature, which obviously is going to make it a faster creature because you, you get the maths, don't you? Just got stuck in the wall there. Proof that Ark is a game with no bugs and glitches whatsoever. In at number two, we have got the Maywing. Makes sense why this thing is here, to be honest. It's just a really fast, quick glider. Obviously, that really helps its benefits. Probably the fastest one out there. It can skim over the top of water really fast under the water as well, which definitely pays huge benefit to this thing. And I just generally really love and enjoy this creature for its speed. Now, before we get into the number one spot, we do really need to talk about some honorable mentions that haven't made the list. First, we do want to talk about the Rhino Ganatha. That creature does actually pack some pretty decent speed, maybe some which you wouldn't expect from its size. Also, the Tropiognathus and Astrodelphus need to be mentioned on this list as well, as they can absolutely rip through the map with their jetpack-like saddles. And actually, you might even consider putting them in at number one once you hear what I've got there. But personally, just for general use and speed, I've kind of combined it a bit there. I think that creature is better suited. So with that, let's just get into the number one spot. And in at number one, we have got the Bloodstalker. And I would definitely say this is a controversial one for speed. Yes, it does take quite a lot of learning to really get it up there. And in this B-roll, absolutely terrible at flying. I have... Thus improved a lot more since then. And I didn't really use that as much as a water creature back then. Didn't even show it underwater in this B-roll. But it's uncontested in my opinion for underwater travel. It is so good for all of that. I really do urge you to try it. And obviously you can see the aggros of all the creatures as well. Which makes it pretty great for underwater exploration. Get away from everything really quickly. Surfacing is easy. 
like the maneuverability of this thing is absolutely insane everyone should at least try this out one time in their general arc playing and obviously you can just swing so quickly from place to place obviously this is really not a great demonstration of bloodstalker flying but you can really gather some huge speed with these things especially on the original biome on the original map that they're intended for obviously you know you're not going to be in that place all the time but it doesn't matter they can still pack loads of speed outside of it and that is why i have put the bloodstalker in at number one but anyway, that is the end of today's video, and I really hope that you enjoyed, as I did definitely enjoy making it. As always, comment down below what is the speediest arc tame in your opinion, and if you didn't agree, put your 10 in the comments down below. And with that, I'll see you all later.